Hello, I'm Jane Newsom and I'm a friend of St Anne's Chase Town. Well, over the past couple of days we've heard words and phrases like fantastic, the light at the end of the tunnel just got brighter. And of course that's the reaction that's, that's greeted the news of the latest Covid vaccine from AstraZeneca. I think that one of the most remarkable things about the vaccine and others that, that have appeared like um, uh, Pfeiffer and Moderna, quite apart from the skill of the scientists that have produced them, is the speed with which they've been produced, which has been described as unprecedented. Apparently, it usually takes between two to five years to produce a vaccine, and it can take up to 10 years to, to, for it to fully develop. But it appears that given the urgency of the situation and the fact that it's a situation that's affected the whole world, a number of factors have come together to speed its production. Scientists have, of course, been working on the vaccine um, uh, day and night. But also many volunteers have come forward as, as guinea pigs to try out the new vaccine. The money for the research has been much more forthcoming than for other vaccines. And the international regulators who have to give a um, approval for the production of a new vaccine are making their decisions much more quickly. I heard someone say that the speed of the production of the vaccine is a bit like being in a car in rush hour and then suddenly all the other vehicles disappear out of your way, all the lights are at green and you can sail impede, unimpeded to your destination and you get there much more quickly than you anticipated. That's a lovely picture of the arrival of a gift that could bring new life and new hope to a world that's been put on pause. It would be great if this pause gave the, the world the opportunity to reset, to look again at our priorities, to decide what's really important. It was encouraging to hear that the rich nations meeting virtually for the G20 summit agreed that they would spare no effort to ensure the fair distribution of the vaccine. And the producers of the latest vaccine have said that it will be distributed on a not-for-profit basis. This is so important when it's the world's poor who've been most affected by the consequences of the pandemic. But those of us who aren't at the cutting edge of scientific research and development, who aren't making decisions about the lifting of the lockdown and how we're all going to spend Christmas, well, we can feel very powerless and we can feel very stuck in this limbo time. That picture of the car travelling unimpeded to its destination reminded me of the passage from the book of the, uh, the prophet Isaiah in chapter 40, the prophet says, Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. The passage isn't looking forward to the, the coming of a vaccine, but it's looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, a saviour who will deliver the people from captivity, who will bring hope and new life. And so the route for the Messiah, the Saviour, is made straight and smooth for his arrival. This coming Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, a time when we look forward to Christmas. Traditionally in the church, it's a time of preparation, when we look at our lives and we prepare for the gift of hope and love, Gifts that, as Christians, we see in the baby born in poverty in a stable in Bethlehem. God showing God's love for us by living amongst us, with us, as one of us. Well, our preparations for Christmas are going to be very different this year, aren't they? We keep be being reminded that this won't be a normal Christmas. But maybe this pause, this interruption to normal service, gives us time to reset to re-evaluate, to look at the obstacles that we put in the way of light and life and hope. Maybe in our lives we can make a straight way 
so that hope and new life can come into our lives unimpeded. Because there are lots of things, aren't there, that we put in the way of hope and new life. Things that stop us moving on. Maybe this Advent, it's time to make that apology, repair that friendship, right that wrong, reach out to someone who's been on your lives or on your, on, on your heart, or maybe just reevaluate how we prioritise our relationships, our time, our wealth. There is a lot of uncertainty around at the moment, but what remains certain is the steadfast love of a God who longs to bring us hope and life this Christmas. Let us pray. God of all love, give us the courage to open our hearts and our lives to the gift of hope and new life that you long to bring us. Amen.